Just making sure I set everything up correctly here with the grip, getting the body in, making sure I'm all good, then just turn the body. Wow, how easy is golf on the driving range? <laughs> it's so easy, isn't it? On the driving range, everything just goes dead straight. Don't hit a bad shot out here. Hello and welcome back to Josh Oddy YouTube. Today we're doing a little bit of a run through of a practice session and how I go about preparing for a tournament. Now, in a couple of days time, we are playing at Pyford Lakes on the Clutch Pro Tour. Um, game's feeling good, but just need to do a few things, sharpen up and um, yeah, go out there and have some fun in a couple of days time. Really excited to just continue playing in tournament golf. Um, my previous last round at Luton Who was a couple under par after a first round six over. Now, first round was just so ropey, um, definitely a lot of room to improve and the driver was a massive thing. So um, I had the Ping G430 in the bag and then we got a new shaft in the crank, um, KBS uh, category five, 70 gram, cut a little bit shorter, um, big shout out to Jason at um, Golf Principles or Club Champion Golf, they're called now. Um, yeah, he really, really helped me out and um, yeah, put the crank in on round number two and, and hit some really good shots. So there was definitely a lot to build on from that round two. And then I just want to run through a, a, a practice session today, talk about what I need to do well when we're playing at Pyford. Um, and yeah, run through some things. Hopefully this little practice session teaches you a little bit of an insight to how we go about preparing for a tournament. Um, yeah, let's get it underway. So 10 balls just to warm up. Um, I'm just literally warming up. I'm not really focusing on a distance, roughly going for that target. But no real thought process going into these apart from just getting the body moving and um, turning. All the balls that I practice with are Pro V 1X, um, is the ball that I compete with. So, really important that when I'm coming out here, I'm getting the same numbers as um, that I'm getting out on the course as well. You know, if I'm coming out here and practicing with a bog standard range ball that spins jumping up, um, sorry, jumping down, launch is going up, it, it's just not realistic. And, and as the wedge is getting dirtier there, the flight will be starting to go higher um, with less spin give this a little scrub and a wipe get them grooves nice and clean the albatross towel doing just that and then check the flight of this one out yeah it should be a lot lower this one not really going to change anything with the fundamentals and probably a bunch more spin on that as well. And um, that's just simply down to just having a clean club face and something that's so underestimated is just actually having clean grooves and a good golf ball. You know, pays a massive factor into how that ball's reacting. You know, a bunch of spin on that. And without the clean grooves, you're not gonna get that flight. So yeah, that's a, that's a big one for me. Um, we're gonna go into some pitching now and work on our clock system. Okay, so GC3 is now on um, and we're gonna go through, I've got, I did have three balls um, with each wedge. So lob wedge, sand wedge and gap wedge. Now I'll only hit three just because I should be dialed in after three balls. Um, I've got three different yardages with each wedge. So I've got a nine o'clock swing, 10 o'clock swing, which for me, a really good feel is that right shoulder. I feel like my hands get level with the right shoulder and then I have a full swing, which is like an 11 o'clock. So 
we'll just run through this nice and quickly and I'll take a photo. So lob wedge, nine o'clock, should be 60 yards. Okay, ball number three. I'll show you the photo. Okay, ball number three, and we got the 60 yards dialed in. So, now we're going right shoulder, lob wedge, should be around about 80 yards. So, let's see if we can dial this one in. And I'll tell you what, every ball number three, I'm gonna take a photo, put some pressure on it. Come on then, dial it in, 80 yards. That was good. That was good, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, full swing lob wedge should be 90 yards. I need to clean the grooves. <laughs> that is launching up my nostrils. Okay, last ball. I'm taking a photo of this for you boys. Taking a photo of this for you boys and girls. 90 yards. I think I've, oh no, not bad. Not bad. Okay, let's run through it. Sand wedge should be 75 yards. I'm gonna end on that one. And as time goes on, um, and as I start to go further into this, like if I hit my number straight away, I'm not going to continue to stand here and just hit balls for the sake of it because I've, I've hit that number already. So, um, you know, 77.5, that's close enough for me. Um, now we're going to go right shoulder with a sandwich. This should be about 90. There we go, straight again. So, 92.7. 104. Okay, sandwich just not going as far as I think. Um, Go one more, just bring that ball back ever so slightly. I'm just gonna almost try and feel like I'm hitting a trappy draw on this one. Um, which is actually such a good feeling for me. The tendency is to go that way, steep across it. So the trap draw is a, is a great feel for me. So ball back ever so slightly, which is probably now just middle of stance because I play everything forward. Trap draw, there we go, that's what I'm talking about, baby. We get there in the end. We get there in the end. So, started off hot with the sandwich there, just couldn't quite hit my end number, but like I say, if I'm hitting my number straight away, I'm happy. Um, so, yeah, we got there in the end, 110 with the full sandwich. Cap wedge, as I say, we're not here to spend all day on this, so let's get this one done quick. Nine o'clock, 85. Oh baby. <sighs> okay, right shoulder with gap wedge. This is probably my favorite one of them all. This is 110 shot. Yeah, bottom groovy a little bit. There we go, baby. Come on. Hit your numbers.
Okay, full gap wedge. Should be 125. Light is just beautiful. 129, I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it. Spin was ever so slightly down. Um, but number wise, like, I'm happy, you know? Uh, yeah, number wise, I'm happy there. Because 125, I'm looking to go past it anyway. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not mad about that a bunch because it's probably spinning back. So that's why I'm not mad about it going past the number. Um, just running through some wedges there, dialing it in. It's a very important part to the game is having them, you know, numbers. But like I say, I'm not here to spend all day on that. Um, if I hit my number straight away, I'll just move on. Um, but yeah, you've really got to know um, your, your swing lengths. And then importantly, how far exactly is that carrying? Hit your number and that's all you can really do. You know, when you get out there, repeat that process. Um, hit, hit your length for swing and you should hit your number. Okay, so now moving on to some pretty technical stuff. Um, just going through my swing process and, you know, making sure it fits out here. I love practicing off grass just because you've got no reference point. Um, and my coach always says this to me that in the sim and, and especially when you're practicing off a mat, you've just got that dimension around you. You know exactly where your alignment is. When you're out here, you could be anywhere with your lines. So um, even when I chuck a stick down, I've got something to reference me to exactly where I'm aiming. You know, it's great to practice without that sometimes and, and just reference it with your body rather than um, rather than having a stick and a mat there every time, you know, when you get out on the course, you've got nothing. So if you're always referencing against something, sometimes you're not learning. And for me, like, I don't even need a club really to know what's going on. It's all about kind of training my body movements. And then from there, if I put a similar movement on it with my body, the club should just follow along in a good position. <clears throat> so my tendency when I get a club into my hand is probably to do something like that, lose a bit of height on the, da on the backswing. So, that's why I'm just training the body, turning, get a club in your hand, and just turn. All you're doing is turning. It's a movement of the body, the club, and the ball just get in the way. The only thing I dislike about practicing outside is that it's, um, Sometimes like the wind being here. So like, say if the wind was out the left here and it was pushing the ball to the right, I tend to then want to go like left with my swing to counteract for that. Um, so the wind's into the breeze here today and naturally I probably want to drive it out lower. Um, but you know, you just got to kind of almost ignore it and um, focus on what you're focusing on and uh, be pretty internal with it you know don't let the surroundings change your focus and what you're doing just making sure i set everything up correctly here with the grip getting the body in making sure i'm all good then just turn the body Wow, how easy is golf on the driving range? <laughs> it's so easy, isn't it? On the driving range, everything just goes dead straight. Don't hit a bad shot out here. Get on the course, put a flag in the way, it all goes to pot.
Right, technical work done with the long game. Um, hit a few balls, feeling comfortable. And you know, I think that's the big thing is don't come out here and just bash balls for the sake of it. It really is pointless. Um, come out here, get what you need done, done. <laughs> um, and then, you know, don't stand here for hours. You don't need to. Once you get everything in the correct position and you're happy with what's going on, you know, don't get it out of your system. Leave it in there and um, trust on, on what you've worked on. It's working, so, you know, um, job's done here. And we're gonna go and do some short game now um, and then touch up on that side of things. So I got myself like a little four footer. Um, this is just a stroke station where all I'm simply doing is squaring off the face with these two tees and just trying to stroke my putter straight through it and not trying to overcomplicate it. Um, I won't do any pace stuff here because the greens will be completely different on next, next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and then when we arrive at the course, I'll just do a bunch of pace putting when I get there. So just working on stroke and start line here. 